So hello everyone, welcome. I'm Denise Butchko and I'm here with Janet Stevenson in conjunction with KCD Software. And we are going to have a fun, insightful hour talking about how to create award-winning designs. So this is, we've got a couple examples we're going to show you, and I'm just going to dive right into the, uh, the visuals here. For those of you who don't know me, I, I, am, I call Chicago home. I am one of the first class of registered storage designers, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, that aspect of things. But I work in dual capacity. I came through with my original career in marketing, turned into a closet designer, and then was able to fall back into my love of marketing as social media platforms really came into prominence in like 2007, 2008. So I really get a huge thrill out of being able to merge both because I love beautiful things, I love working with designers, and I've been really fortunate to be able to do different projects with, you know, Doug Mocken and Company and Heifala and Sugatsumi, which is favorite, one of my favorite words to say, and even now with KCD Software. KCD happens to be the software that I use to still do closet and custom storage designs. And I actually am one of three judges for our industry, what we call our Top Shelf Design Awards. So there's a judge out in California named Joyce and another uh, judge in St. Louis uh, named Angela. And we have a process coordinated through Vance Publishing and we actually judge the competition. So we're going to talk today about designs and about some aspects of what judges look for. Um, and my honored, I am super, super excited to have Janet Stevenson with me today because Janet in the closet industry is really not only a rock star, but she is so dedicated. She's served on the association board for probably since she turned five years old. No, I'm exaggerating, but you can see here that she's from the Philadelphia area, from Closet City. They not only design and sell themselves, but they are a manufacturer. She's won a boatload of awards for her work, and she's one of the most dedicated, smart, honest, sharp and fun to have cocktails with uh, people in the industry. So every year at the conference, we make sure we get together and we connect. So, hey, Janet, how are you? Well, thank you, Janice. Hi, everybody. Hi. I, I, how are you today? I'm good. It's Excellent. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Philadelphia, so I'm a happy camper. Awesome. And I'm excited to have you share this information, so we're going to dive right in. Um, note to everybody who's attending here today, if you have questions, feel free to type them in as you think of them. We're going to go through the information and then do the questions at the end because I want to make sure that we get through what we want to cover. And then that way, if you have to leave for some reason, you still get the crux of the info and um, then, you know, you, you won't miss as much. So feel free to type those questions at any point or you can come back to them at the end. And that's just a note keeping thing. So on to who really doesn't want to be acknowledged for a job well done? Uh, you know, we all, you know, whether we have job jobs or we're running a business or we're doing projects for our clients, it feels great to put our heart and soul into something and create something cool and then get acknowledged for it. You know, and sometimes I'll even take acknowledgement for a meatloaf dinner, you know, if that's what it takes. But to be able to get that acknowledgement for my work, I know I really enjoy that. It motivates me, and I'm sure it motivates all of you as well. So what goes into award-winning designs? You know, there are all kinds of ingredients. And I think that it really merges with, it's similar in many ways to red carpet fashion. Because there is planning, there is strategy, and there is style. Even though the outfits don't always come off that way, um, it's really, I, I love the, the uh, similarities between fashion and interior design and what we do as space planners, closet designers, kitchen designers, cabinet makers, etc. So there's a lot that, that you can merge in that. And how do you know that it could be a winner? You know, what, what do you think about what, what happens? How can you assess that? 
So that's what we're going to talk about. So the first thing that comes to mind, especially for what we do, is, is it the space? And I don't know, fortunately, I've not ever walked into a space quite like this, but Janet, what's your take on that? Well, um, the space is so crucial uh, to the beginning process of determining whether you have the potential for having an award-winning design project. Um, so that's the first thing I look at. I mean, that's every, every time I walk into a client's um, home, my first reaction is, let me see the space, let me get an overview, um, are there challenges, concerns that I need to um, not only observe but uh, accomplish the goal of um, creating the space that they want. So, yeah, it's crucial. Crucial. And um, Janet, somebody's saying that your audio is a little low, so I'm just passing that along. I, I think that that's all on control on your end. Um, but in addition to uh, the space, I think for me, I've said for many years that my life is about my relationships uh, in, in all facets. You know, you can do a lot of different things, but when you've got, and in particular, we're talking about client work here. So for me, when there's that client that I really connect with, that can make a huge difference in how the project goes. And I think that, Janet, you, you probably agree in, in many ways with that philosophy. Yeah. Um, let me know if the, if the sound is getting better um, as I'm playing with it a little bit. Okay. It still sounds the same to me. It says, Janet, please place your microphone a little closer. So. Okay. Um, the sound is okay for somebody else. So it might be, um, sometimes the internet connections are different in different places, but um, we'll keep trying. I just so, played with my output volume, so let's ah, see if that helps. That sounds a little better. Okay. Um, so relationships with people, what, what are your thoughts there? Crucial. Absolutely, 100%. You need to connect. I mean, I personally find that it doesn't happen very often. I am very much a people person. But yeah, it doesn't happen very often that I will walk into a client's home and begin the process and feel no connection. And that makes my job so much harder, and the process throughout the whole project will be harder. But because of the fact that I am a people person, um, I have learned techniques in order to open people up, to share, and that I start from the very beginning. It's very crucial to have a great relationship with your client because you want to please them. They ultimately want to be pleased by you. Um, and that is where you get your repeats and referrals from those happy campers yeah. from, your, from your finished product. Yeah. And I have found that even though it sometimes pains me, the more I have the courage to step into honesty, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to listen and then uh, ask, you know, is there, would you be open to something new? Or uh, I feel like it's really my job to bring my expertise to the table. So I balance in that relationship because, yeah, sometimes you're feeling the connection and they want to hear what you have to say. And sometimes you don't. But still, I feel like I'm going to step up and say, it's my job to bring my years of expertise to the floor and then you Miss client can decide yay or nay about it, but I've got to advise you. I'm here to help you create what you want. So I'm very much also about making that project be a manifestation of what the client envisions with a professional's guidance. And so it's, if, if they want to give me carte blanche on style, you know, that's really fun. Um, but I, I think that um, balancing it with what they want is key as well. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. So think about that, you guys, as you're going in, you really are the experts. And, and uh, keep that in the forefront of your mind. I was actually had an awesome, awesome closet designer call me the other day because she wanted to walk away from a potential project. And we talked through how she could step out of that and still be graceful with it and not feel like her head and ego were all puffed up. So what I coached her on was, you know, Sue, you are an awesome designer, and you need to own that, and then stick to your philosophy and go with it, because that is incredibly powerful, I think, in developing any relationship. And then there's budget, and um, any thoughts on the budget aspect of a project? 
Well, I, I have been um, trying to get people to uh, formalize a budget in their mind from my very first meeting. Um, and I really do, everybody has an idea of what they possibly would like to spend. Now, can you give it to them for that amount of money? Possibly not. But I do try to um, interact with them about budget from the very beginning. As we're first having our consultation, you know, I'm looking at the space. I might say, do you have a budget in mind? Or is, and usually they'll say, hmm, I don't know. And I said, if it was between 1000 and 2000 are you OK with that? And right away, they're going to have a response. So if you know how to calculate in your mind quickly how much money a project's going to cost. I average it out by a linear foot uh -huh. uh, in my industry, in my area of the Philadelphia area, and I give them that linear foot price and try to get them to, to give me a sense of what they're willing to spend. Of their feedback, yeah. And I do the same thing. Um, I, I will, you know, kind of go, you know, if it's a millwork and cabinetry, it could be over a thousand dollars a linear foot, Mrs. Smith. So you've got twenty linear feet here for this closet. Were you thinking that you wanted to invest? And I always use the word invest, twenty to twenty-five grand. And then if they look like they're gonna throw up, you know, then you know to move in the other direction. But if they're fine with it, then you know, let's roll. I can I can work with that. You know, I'll I'll create something on that on that line. Yeah. So what elements do award-winning designs typically consist of? And this we're kind of going to talk about both from a design perspective as well as at, at some point, a, a, you know, the, what the judges look for. And I pulled this picture in terms of using unique space planning techniques. Because if you look at this, you can see that, well, there's wine. I'm sure it being wine storage had nothing to do with me picking this picture, but it is actually from the Kitchen and Bash show that I, I took this photo uh, a couple years ago. What I like is that it's a slightly different use of space, that if somebody was saying, hey, give me a wine rack, you know, and if you can look closely, you can see the handles are actually cork. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, your thoughts on that, Janet? Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I do um, like to find different products out there that I would use um, in, an, in some sort of an application that would be outside of the box kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. That's very cool. And kind of leading right into that, these are a couple of scenarios where um, you've got, this is your project on the left, and then this is... Um, a Revachelle product on the right, but I know Janet, you've used this product also. So you and I have talked about looking at things from a, a different angle, or you mentioned something about the pants hanger. Can you elaborate on your thoughts for different ideas? Yes, uh, that that particular pants hanger and Revachelle has another pants hanger that uh, pulls out, and it has movable uh, rods with like a rubberized uh, covering on it. Uh, good so they, the pants don't slide off, but I use them all the time in women's closets, very specifically because the scarf is the, is the go-to accessory item right now. Uh, women have oodles of them, and even though it's a pants hanger, I never have used this for pants. I always use it for scarves. Interesting. And I think that's a great key that, and, and this is, you know, when you're networking with people, um, you've got some connections, and, and you look at things with different eyes is a way that I frequently like to say it. You know, if I, what is my purpose? Like you're saying, you're trying to hang scarves. So what ways could they hang? What, you know, and you might have, you know, you could fold them, you could roll them, you can hang them, you can put them on hook, you know, what's good and bad about all those things. But thinking about it from a different point of view is what really catches the eye of some, some submissions in a competition. It's that idea that, oh, that aha moment, I never thought of it that way. And so sometimes those ideas will come to you from, you know, you're just, touring a house or you're looking through a magazine or you're going through pictures on house, um, H-O-U-Z-Z, the online platform. Uh, so I think that that's, that's, and how, what's your favorite way, Janet, or one or two favorite ways to 
come up with or find those kinds of, of ideas of what might be out there? Well, I every year go to the Closet Conference and Closets Expo uh, that's been held throughout the country. Um, I find that all of the um, vendors um, come prepared with something new and different for the industry. Mm -hmm. So I usually walk that show at least two times. Um, first, just to look. Second, it's a go back and start touching and feeling and asking questions and, and doing that, that pondering that you, that you do when you think, hmm, how could I use that? How mm -hmm. successful will I be with using that product in my area? Everybody's um, location does um, impact um, what is acceptable out there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in old Philadelphia. Uh, there's not very many modern people that I deal with on a daily basis. So I'm always looking for something that might be modern, but will someone accept that in their home? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But hence, hence, we'll talk a little bit further about the, the project on the left, but um, that's pretty modern looking, and it went into a 1920s Tudor house. Um, so, you know, it's all about the will it be accepted. Yeah, but that 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 show is probably the first place I go for new products. Um, I certainly you know search the web, um, but I like to use certain uh, reliable sources at all times. The relationships that I've built with um, my vendors is very important to me, and uh, I know that if if I need them because of that relationship building, just like in anything else, they'll come through for me. Yep. Um, the, the Philadelphia um, Design Home is case in point. It was very fast track this year, and I needed to reach out to my, my friends at Revishelf to help me get new product very quickly. I mean, like, I needed it the next week. And because of the relationships that I had built with my reps, um, they made it happen. Yeah. And, and that saved my, my butt for that yeah. project. And I would I totally agree with that. And I have been fortunate enough, like Hayfala is another example. I mean, they're a huge company. I am not a huge company, but they have a showroom in Chicago. And I actually was working with them on a, a design for a, a vet. It was a donated thing. Um, but we... By collaborating with them, you know, they have thousands of products. I could never know the whole line. Um, but we came up with some typical kitchen products that we ended up using in this closet. The, the vet is in a wheelchair. So you, you really leveraging your networks is, um, I think, an excellent path to being able to create designs that can win awards because you get other people thinking about it with you or you pose something to them and then they go, oh. And so I do that as you do, Janet, with the professional networks and then we do it amongst ourselves, you know, with other closet people, huge value. So whatever niche you're coming from today, that, that taking that time to connect with those people, yes, make the time because it really pays off and it just makes life so much more fun. So here, you know, we're, we're, our goal to solve the client's problems with innovation and beauty. And that's really um, key. What, what ideas can you come up with? And how do you do that beautifully? And tapping into all your resources. That's not new rocket science. But, you know, we're prompting you to remember that and really leverage it. And not just be looking in the same old places, watching the same old shows, eating the same old meatloaf over and over again. You know, what else can you do? So that is part of the psychology of winning, I think, for life and for designs. Um, so in a little more of the specifics, when you, when you are going on an appointment, Janet, and you're going to walk through the door, now it's kind of a, an exchange here where we want to talk about what really goes through your mind. What, what is it that you, what are you thinking? Well, I... I walk into a client's home, every client's home, with the thought that this might be a project that could be award-winning. Mm -hmm. This might be that it could be something very simple. Um, I had a very challenging little pantry that I was working on with a contractor, and 
he was renovating the kitchen and the pantry was, you know, under stairs, um, sort of like tucked away, yep. very difficult to get to. We won a joint award and he feels that the pantry had a huge impact on the success of winning that award. Now, you don't know that in the beginning, but I look at everyone as a challenge and so I'm very mindful of what I'm, I'm looking at from day one of walking into a client's house. And so when we say here to check out the space early, um, is there ever an opportunity where you might think of something and then you're able to go back and say, look, if we could move this or if you could put this here, we could do something much more Absolutely. effective? Okay. Absolutely. Cool. That's very important. And it's, it's important to suggest that to the client as well, that, you know, if we if it's a new construction or a renovation of some sort, you know, have me come in early and a suggestion of placement of a door or a light switch or whatever you think is minor, but it could be major in the outcome of what you're going to end up producing for them. Yeah, agree. And photography uh, is something that I've been harping, I hate to use that word, I sound like my mom, but encouraging people to uh, utilize. It's key, and we'll, we'll make several examples and points of that in terms of how important it is for a design competition. But it's also even more key today because you have all these platforms that you can use it on, meaning House, Facebook, your blog, email marketing, YouTube, LinkedIn, da -la 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 -la. So a lot of people will, you know, some people will still take pictures with a digital camera. Most people will use a phone. Um, and actually this cool shot is um, just that now there's, you're going to be able to subscribe to a, ser a service from KCD that actually will allow you with a tablet to be able to take the pictures and do your design in a real mobile touch screen friendly environment. So this is not a sales pitch for that, but it's to kind of put the word out there that this is something that's coming that makes things even more easy to organize, that you have the software on the tablet, you take pictures. I see tons of people standing with their tablets taking pictures all over the world. Um, and it just can be organized and set up in the right folders. So you can also, the photography is important when you're doing the production. If the shop needs to explain something uh, or you need to explain it to them, I will frequently in the times of an obstacle, I know I need doc to document that if it's something that might be submitted for an award. I know I need to document it in order to get the job built correctly. So beyond taking the measurements, I take pictures and I even take some video after I've kind of figured it out. Then I'll hold the, you know, the phone and go, you know, this is 36 inches from the left wall and it's 12 inches deep and it's 14 inches high and uh, my clearances need to be yada, yada, yada. So that when I go back home, I can think that through. So you can really get that phone out of your pocket um, and take pictures. Or if you, your policy is to leave your phone in the car, which is totally fine, then have a digital camera and always, um, then this is actually one of Janet's pictures that is a before shot. So we said take pictures from all angles. And think, in a, I'm going to use a closet as an example. If I've got a big walk-in closet, you know, I'm going to stand in the center of the door and I'm going to take a picture straight on. I'm going to take a picture to the left. I'm going to take a picture to the right. When the project is done, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do the very same thing. Center, left, right, whatever those positions, so to speak, might be, because those make the best before and afters. And then I can also utilize that in the software and have the design reflect that. So whether you get in the habit of doing some of the same things or you know you've got an obstacle or you know you've got a great shot this way, you know, start processing that in your brain to keep that in mind because it really makes a huge difference. And yeah, the video is awesome. You know, I, I, it's awesome because when you're talking through an obstacle like that, you don't have to have hair and makeup because you're focused on the space. Um, but boy, it helps me explain things to the shop, to an installer. It's a reference back for me. And then, you know, quite frankly, I kind of use it as teaching moments as well. Um, but that's, um, 
So in the process, as we were saying, what, what, is, what do our brains go through when we're thinking about this? You know, you take all these measurements and then you do some space planning. So I think, Janet, we're getting to um, tell me a little bit about this. I know we're going to go into some more pictures of this, but um, this is actually a plan view of the software and what. So you took all these measurements in this space and then what? Yeah, I, I took measurements in the space. I agree wholeheartedly about taking pictures before pictures. Not only um, does it help in the future if you are going to um, present this as a, a potential award-winning project to have the before and afters. I use that exclusively to show before and afters to clients um, just so that they can see what's the dramatic difference from one to another uh, when you're potentially trying to sell a, a, a job to somebody. But I find that the integration by, by coming up with a design, coming up with a 3D view, uh, and presenting the 3D view to the clients is like so impactful because I'm very visual. Mm -hmm. but most of my clients, most of my clients are not. They just know they have a problem. They've called me in to solve the problem, and they look to me to explain how I'm going to do that. And through KCD, the, the easy access to be able to do something as, as beautiful as this, this 3D view, I walk back in, I show them this, I say, now this is what it's going to look like. I haven't built it yet, mm -hmm. but they get it. I mean, they mm -hmm. look at that and go, wow. You know, KCD allows me to change colors, allows me to add accessory items if I need to, like books or whatever. Yep. So, that allows them to visualize what's going to happen in the end. Um, and it's it also, really powerful. And it also helps me because uh, being a manufacturer, KCD talks to our shop uh, machinery. So I'm confident whenever I design something that I know that it's going to be fabricated ultimately and installed just the way I designed it, um, which, is, which is wonderful. It makes it so easy for me, makes it easy for my shop. Um, if, I, if we run into a glitch, um, I must admit that I've called them myself and said, oh, I'm running into this, and I'm, I don't know what in the library I should use to replicate that, and they have told me how to handle that. So that's always been really helpful because they're very uh, interactive that way as well. Cool. And here again, you know, like there's a detail shot. I, that would be another tip on photography that I would encourage people. It, you, you don't think of it, but take the tight shots. And only if you're taking tight shots of the handles and the profiles of the doors and drawers can you leverage that with the door manufacturer and the handle manufacturer. But it's also, they, they come out really great, and it allows people to see that. And I think we keep thinking, oh, how do I get this whole kitchen in here or this whole media room or this whole library? And yet you also knew, like, let's, you know, let's show the detail of it. Um, so brilliant job with that. Um, and this was, we showed a, a picture of this one earlier, but this is actually a closet. And this is a, a, the plan view, again, with the software that's giving you an idea of what the physical walls and the space are. Uh, you can, I didn't want to go crazy with all the numbers because they, they're not that attractive, but they're functional. And you can look and see what the widths and the depths and the heights and all that information. So when clients who are very analytical ask you those kinds of questions, uh, or you're just calculating your space planning, uh, it's, it's awesome. And so here, now we're going to go through some photos. This is actually um, the space. So here's the plan view of the space. Then here is a, a picture raw, like, you know, this thing's got drywall and floor. Then here is that space with the actual 3D. And I don't know, Janet, do you want to, you want me to just flip through these and you can kind of talk about it a little bit? Well, the, if you go back to the, the fir, uh, that picture, the first one, yeah. my before picture, that's when I start to get excited. Okay. When I, when, I, when I see something like this, yes, it's got challenges. But that to me, with thinking about potentially having an award-winning design, I know that I need to answer how am I going to overcome these challenges. That's very important in any design competition. You need to explain your product, explain your project, what you had to overcome. So this, was, this first picture was like, I was so excited because I thought, oh, my God, I love all these challenges. Love it. And then came up with a 3D rendering 
um, I had, uh, as I said, this was a 1920s tutor here in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and the, the client wanted to bring in the modern of their, of their personality. So I could bring in the modern, but I still needed to be beautiful and functional in that space. So this was a, a presentation 3D view that I was able to give the homeowner, and ultimately here's an after picture uh, that I was able to get back in the house afterwards to be able to show as many of the accessory items that I was able to use, how much space I was able to use um, effectively, which ultimately brought me so many awards. And did you, is that a laundry basket underneath that ironing that board? That is, that is a, that is a pull-out double-divided uh, Revish shelf hamper. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Cool. Love that. And what is the, I see the, what's that narrow vertical section? The tall section there? That yeah. Is the, that is the double, uh, that's a jewelry uh, pullout that Revishelf provides. The top one is a jewelry, that jewelry, beautiful jewelry armoire, and the bottom mm -hmm. one is a double-sided uh, necklace holder that we create in our shop. Nice. So what a great, there again, that was, well, I can say because I this was part of something that you know she submitted and I was a judge for something like that people go ah oh, you know you look at that and say great use of space you know not very wide maximizing the return it pulls out you can look at it being able to look at something of that you have whether it's 18 boxes of macaroni and cheese or your 17 necklaces uh, it, that's an ultimate luxury to me and you know when you design a space that reflects that like kudos I think that looks terrific here's another 3d shot of the closet I think that the just it just helps people see uh, and this is just a reference shot that you can see so that a lot of times the shop will call me back or or let me speak from a judge's perspective we in the closet industry and Janet knows these parameters even probably more intimately than I do because she helped develop and create this certification program for the closet industry but being able to look at the dimensions and say oh you know somebody put hanging going into and out of the corner or that's never really going to fit they didn't allow enough depth etc so when you can do your space planning with software that allows you to look at all these numbers you can assess whether that's really going to function and not just be another pretty face, right? Correct. Yep. Um, and so, and it's always fun. This is just for fun that there's the before and after shot next to each other, um, sort of like a glamour magazine. I think that that's just a really fun way to look at things. And here's another one. And wasn't there, so if you look on the left, we see the pipes coming out. Tell me what happened there. Oh, that was, that that was a throwing me for a loop when I showed up one day and there's a pipe sticking out and that box is sitting there. And I said to the, to the builder, I said, so what is that and is it staying? And they said, well, they wanted to put a steam shower in and I didn't have any place to put the steam unit, so it's going in your closet. So I had to come up with a way to hide that effectively, hence in the right photo, that deeper cabinet has the steamer inside there mounted uh -huh. to the to the right wall mm -hmm. but I was able to then put in deep shelves up above it for storage so I didn't lose out on the storage I just had to come up with a creative way to hide that stupid steamer yeah. <laughs> which happens a lot in closets it does. it does and I have found now I have this little like radar thing in my brain where when the closet is next to the bathroom and inevitably those pipes they never show up until way after you've approved designs and almost started manufacturing the thing and then so now I have this paranoia about if it's if it's close to the bathroom I'm really asking everybody because nine times out of ten, some kind of obstacle is going to show up in my space. And then I've got to get back out there. That's that go to the space early and often because then you got to, you got to punt. You got to come up with plan, you know, C, D, E, or F, whatever the and case the, may be. And the other thing is keeping in mind the design of this space. Mm -hmm. uh, as you, if you look on the left, I've got not only angles, I've got a window, every little piece is yeah. jutting back farther and farther. So we kept the clean line all the way across the front, and where the, where the steam unit 
um, had to go, that extends out. But if you look on the other side of the hamper unit, I have shoe, corner shoe shelves. And that sort of gives you that same rounding of the corner. It's mm -hmm. almost like a yin and a yeah, yang. Yeah, so. symmetrical. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that was, a, that was a, a thought process that I had to come up with um, to make the space feel appropriate. It needs to feel appropriate when you're done. I mean, and you can have a beautiful design and you think it looks great, but if it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it should be there, then it shouldn't be there. And it's an excellent point that you're making about the symmetry of that as well. That thinking it through, not just sticking in some kind of storage solution, but really thinking about the function and the beauty and, as you're saying, the feel of it, that's very balanced. And that is something that is an important factor when judges are looking at what you're submitting. When the media is looking at something that they might do a story about, and you can think about the two, and there are a lot of similarities between what the media wants and what a competition um, is looking for. And those kinds of things, that kind of thought and execution, uh, it, it puts you above what most people submit. You know, just because you added crown and base molding does not mean you, you know, really, like, it doesn't take it, what the experience and thought process that Janet, that you went through for this closet, which I, I think is so cool. Yeah, I love that project. So, judgments. <clears throat> what 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 I want to say on behalf of, um, and if you if you look at the there's a I did two blog posts one with each of the judges from the top shelf competition, um, but you need to really tell your story much in the way that Janet has done that with us today, and if. You know, if you're going through the process of actually entering a submission into an award competition, um, you need to tell that story. And if you're not a great writer, then get some help. Because it depends on different competitions have different parameters for how many visuals they let you send in, how many pictures, um, the plans, you know, et cetera. And so tell me a great story. And remember, if I am a judge, I have a stack, you know, or, or, you know, dozens, if not hundreds, of entries online. So you got to, you need to jump out. You need to jump out and stand out in a great way um, with your visuals, with your story, um, you know, with, with anything that's going to help me go, oh, yeah, this is awesome. The plan view, if there is a limitation on the contest or the submissions, this one is key because we as judges want to be able to see how you've used that space. And again, that Carol's Closet is a great example. Obstacles, the symmetry, the different depths, the height, the angles, the window, you know. Let's just throw in, you know, a coffee machine and a wine bar and a dog bed while we're at it. Um, here, like Janet, you talked about having the same line flush. Um, I had that scenario, um, and actually I probably should have put some before and after pictures here, and I didn't do that because I actually did do this project. But this is dead space back here, but what, it did, we, what I did was keep this. So if you couldn't see this plan view in conjunction with the story, you wouldn't know what was going on here not providing the plan view, you know, step away from it. It's the bird's eye. The judges, the media have not seen your project. They're not familiar with it. What do they need to know? What makes that clear? And every picture should tell a story. And this kind of cracks me up because, you know, it's saying you can only go right, but then it's spinning arrows. And it's, you know, is it the close-up detail? Um, is it that there was an obstacle there and you have the before and after of that? Is it, you know, a, a style of something? What is the, the story of that project? And everything today is about telling a great story. So if you have to go back to your, you know, first, second grade mindset of how you would tell a story to somebody, um, you know, that, that's probably worth a, a, a revisit. And then leverage. Leverage is one of my favorite words and favorite ways to think about things in a good way because the, you know, we often say in the world of marketing these days, you know, the content machine is like a hungry monster whose appetite you can like never 
satisfy. So how do you take the things that you're doing and get the most from them? And what you can do when you're entering a design competition in this scenario is that, okay, you're taking the time and the energy and you're going to put this together. But that helps develop trust with the clients that you've worked with before. They're seeing like, oh my gosh, Janet is out there still doing great things. And with new potential clients, you know, you've done a show house, you've won awards. That makes them know, allows them to know that you really are who you say you are. It helps you get more respect in the industry. That's never a bad thing. That opens all kinds of doors for opportunities that maybe you haven't even thought about. It is a broader acknowledgement of your work that you can use in a lot of different areas, and it really does bring you potential new clients. If people are looking for, um, I've done some webinars on hows, and people are really looking for that credibility and that expertise, and what do you bring to the table that makes you different? Well, if you start talking about some of the things that you've accomplished with your design work, that elevates as it should because you that's where you deserve to be. You love what you do, you're doing a great job, and now you're telling that story and you're leveraging it in as many ways as you can. A simple way is with your email signature. This is Janet's and she has there, you know, that she's won these different awards. So she doesn't use that all the time, right Janet? Tell me how you use this idea. Well, I use this in my initial um, email to a client. Uh, it could be I meet with a client one day and at night I could be cook making dinner and I'm emailing that client saying, I really loved meeting you today. I'm very excited about working on your project, uh, you know, and uh, look for, look for uh, some, some information in the, next, in the coming week or so, however yep. I, how long I told them. Yep. Uh, they, I get a header of photo shots of, of work that we have done, so they already see some pictures of completed jobs, and then they get this signature, which uh, emphasizes once again um, what I've left behind in my initial meeting. I leave a packet of information with lots of pictures, but I also have a professional portfolio made up um, by my graphics people mm -hmm. that talks about me, talks about awards that I've won, talks about associations that I've belonged to, if I've held a position on the board, it's talked about that. Mm -hmm. So all that credibility is left behind and this just reinforces it. And you have that credibility also, you use that online as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You would have to say yes anywhere and have to like smack you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, your Facebook friends. I'm using this as an example in terms of leveraging. Um, this is not a contest, but in a way, it, it's a similar vein that um, I'm presenting the, on the topic of hows at the Kitchen and Bath Show this coming year. And if I'm all over connecting with their social platforms because that's going to help me get as one coach that I have says, butts in seats. I mean, when people know you, then you're walking the show. You know, Janet, you could be walking the closet show, and people will come up and be like, oh, you know, like you feel like you know them. And you do not have the single power that any social platform has. So connecting with those platforms and putting your stuff out there. I mean, I am not a kitchen, and bath, a kitchen and bath designer, but there is a kitchen and bath YouTube channel, and they need content. So there's an email on Google Plus the other day. Well, a hot dog, I've got a whole library of videos. So that just gives me a whole other market to reach. And you need to think about things that way. And the same with if that's, you know, if you took a little video of something that you entered in a contest. That's excellent. You know, you don't even have to be the winner. Just the idea that you're going through the steps, that's what I'm talking about. Then if you win, then there's a whole nother story, like follow up to, you know, step A. But going through the process and letting people know that you're doing that, you know, allow the love, feel the love. People, you know, are going to cheer you on um, and maybe help spread the word. I, I am have the privilege of working with one of the best interior design firms in the Chicago market and Susie the lady who owns the firm um, was being nominated for designer of the year through the merchandise mark properties and you know she's on Facebook asking people to vote for her you know if she can do it 
surely you can do it. You know, so think about that. And uh, some contests have versions of the People's Choice Award. Janet, I think you won one where you actually, yeah. you know, the, the judges vote, but then also the people vote. Sort of like and the, I did, and I did do just what you said. I used the power uh, of Facebook, and I used um, the um, LinkedIn groups that I belong to, um, yep. and asked them to. I mean, I just said if if you have a minute, just uh, you know, just your arm. But yeah. it was enough to let me win the the very first People's Choice Award um, so, through Top Shelf. How cool is that? Um, blogging. You know, I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but what a great place for your information to live that people can come and find it and see what you've done. And it, again, helps in all kinds of ways with your business in terms of both organic search and if you're doing any paid search and having people find you, uh, keywords, et cetera. It's feeding that content monster. And so... And for, you know, like this company is in the Chicago market, and they really, truly can claim that they have won the most top shelf awards. That's awesome. That, as a potential customer, gives you a lot of confidence that these people know what they're doing, and they're dedicated to it. And who doesn't want to work with somebody like that? So then contests, because you got to be in it to win it. You know, if you're not going to take the time to submit something and enter, well, then obviously you're not going to win. So think about... Um, any groups that you are members of, you know, whether it's the National Association of Remodelers, the American Society of Interior Designs, the National Kitchen and Bath Association, um, the here's you know the Cabinet Makers Association, uh, Veneer Tech does a closet or not a closet, a contest. Ooh, those c words. Um, Remodeling Magazine does a contest. Um, there's the, through NARI, the Cody Awards, the Top Shelf Awards, which we've talked about. And what I want to tell you about leveraging is connect, contact those organizations. So don't just like quietly, nicely just submit your entry. Ask their marketing people. Connect with, send a Facebook, you know, follow their page on Facebook as an example. Then send a message to them. Hey, are you looking for, some people might have a policy against it, but most scenarios is that they will um, be able to, you know, put your information out there, get it seen in front of more eyeballs, and you never know when a client might come from that. It helps your expertise. It helps your credibility. It's fun. It's really fun to have people comment and interact about your work, I think, um, especially when you're a small business and you spend a lot of time with your computer. So think about that as you're entering in competitions, as you're contacting media. You know, if you're not connected to the media in your market and the media that you dream of someday getting featured in, now I ain't promising anybody Architectural Digest. But think about that and it is about giving it is about sharing it is about putting the word out it is about telling your story so try to reframe it in your mind from that perspective and then haha well, what a great lead in connect with these are the two this is the house profile and the facebook page and we love, uh, actually one of the things that we do with KCD is feature work that our clients as part of KCD have done. So we will put that on the house profile. We love being able to do the before and after shot and the 3D rendering because obviously that helps us, that helps the clients, um, it helps search. So connect, and we would love to connect back to you. Janet, you're on house. I know, is that through your name or through Closet City, or how can people connect with you? If you, if you, if you put in Janet Stevenson, it comes up, and it's, then it's under Closets and Cabinetry by Closet City. But uh, house has been a fabulous connection for me. I have uh, done a number of projects in the Philadelphia area because directly related to them finding me. Mm -hmm. And being able to see all the, and I, I post um, before and afters, but mostly the afters. And yeah. I do have a, I do have a um, award-winning category uh, that they can go through the award-winning uh, projects that I've done. So that's uh, a benefit as well by using, leveraging yeah. that on the house site. Perfect. Exactly. And for me, I'm you know Denise Butchko. I do a lot of things on YouTube. 
Um, my Facebook page is Butch Going Company. Um, so I, it, again, the more that you connect with like-minded people, the more fun these platforms become, and then truly the more effective business tools they become. If you know, with, if you are you know already married to a software or married to a spouse, I'm I don't know, um, but the, this is the contact information also for KCD. Uh, the touch software is going to be launching, I think, within a week, and they have all the details of that. We are not trying to turn this into a sales pitch for that, but just a piece of information that they're, you know, at KCD, we're very dedicated to technology, to listening to what our customers need, to moving that forward in the world and making exciting things happen, and how can your job be easier? So if that's uh, whether you're a client now or you're thinking about it, um, these are the people to talk to who can help you with those kinds of things. And I'm a total dog person, so you know, we just wanted to throw in a little dog slide at the end with a, you know, thank you for attending. And on that note, now I'm going to scroll back up and Janet will see what kind of questions we have here. So, um, uh, Tomar, Tomer, uh, the question was how much on average can you charge for it? And I'm thinking that he's referring to the closet projects and the linear footage. And I, I will take the hit because I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable with stating this information and preface it by geography. So I will preface that as well. But I have put in print many times that what I tell people in the Chicago market is if you're looking at a closet system that's white melamine hanging in shelves, it averages $100 to $150 a linear foot. So if you've got a 10-foot closet, you're looking at about $1,000 or so. And if you're going to add a color or you're going to add doors and drawers, it goes up. And if you're going into real wood, because the difference between melamine and wood, people often will need to be educated about that then you're over a thousand dollars a foot and so that educates them and gives them information and it qualifies them and it helps me with the design process so I'm not designing the Taj Mahal when we're really trying to buy a Chicago bungalow and so uh, I hope that kind of uh, addresses that question and in complicated scenarios I will charge a design fee I'll kind of do a calculation I think the project will be worth and then I typically charge 10% up front so that I get compensated for my time on that and then if they don't do the project or they want to take those designs and actually bid them out they are doing an apples to apples comparison um, so that doesn't really address designs but okay somebody uh, William says he just did a closet with inch and a quarter MDF using the same cam system as he would do and he had it painted it was for an old home here in Santa Fe and the client is really happy and he used the same accessory. So he's just taking a different material, which I agree, that thicker material does look really awesome. Um, Debbie, one challenge for design submissions for me is the limitation of only being able to submit three photos. How can we provide those details to the judges with such limited options? Um, Debbie, and if by chance you're referring to the top shelf, because uh, that's the one that I can speak specifically to, I will tell you that we as judges have been on their case about that since they started that limiting system because it's incredibly frustrating for us to not be able to really see that. So the plan view is key um, and telling that written story is crucial. Then I would say also that they have sworn to me that they changed the format and how they're going to be doing the contest this year so that you should be able to submit more photos and more information. And that makes all the difference in the world. Um, and let them know. You know, you're, you're taking the time to submit an entry. Voice your concerns so that it's not just the people who are judging the competition, if, if that seems frustrating to you, tell them early and often, you know, like voting in Chicago, early and often, um, so that they get the message that they can't just take this easy way out, that they've got to really step up to, 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 to the plate to allow people to highlight their work. Okay, so you should also remember to take a money shot. 
I mean, a before and after money shot, and always have it on the vertical because more publications will publish it and it can get onto the front cover in a ah, vertical versus a horizontal. Great tip. I would not, I did not know that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay, is the webinar, okay, this is just a, somebody got the time confused. Uh, is the webinar going to be posted on YouTube or the KCD site? Dan, um, I can't prom. I'm recording this. Now we have to have the technology work. But if you want to call me or send me an email, I, I have to communicate uh, and determine for sure uh, that typically we do try to post these on the KCD site. Um, but, you know, we can also leverage that you guys are customers and um, we can somehow get you, provided that this recording takes, we can get you guys the information so that you can see what happened from what you missed. Um, will that new mobile design capability work with an iPad or only a Windows tablet? That's from Susan. Susan, it will work with a Windows. And here's something that I learned from John Murphy that I, I, no one has put it so eloquently and logically to me. Um, and now I don't know if I'm going to get a bunch of Mac heads, you know, correcting it, but then I'll, I'll refer it back to John. Um, the processors on the iPad are great with graphics and they run apps and the PC tablets that are the new ones, the surface ones, that they have uh, a bigger brain so to speak. They're able to actually run programs. So the KCD Touch will be a PC based tablet application. Uh, I, you know what, I take back that word application. Uh, it's going to be PC based and that, so it won't be an iPad. It's going to be Windows. But you can have KCD on a Mac. And I'm, I'm a Mac user. Cool. Um, and what you do is uh, the Apple Store uh, puts boot camp into your Mac. So one-fifth of my computer is boot camp, and it's a Windows operating procedure. So I have Windows um, Office on that side. Okay. I switch back and forth. Uh, I don't connect to the internet that way, only for safety reasons for virus protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, so I'm a converted Mac user and have absolutely no problem using KCD on that. Okay, so great information. Thank you, because I wouldn't be able to speak to that. Um, Stacy also has a question. Do you use this go-to meeting or something like it for customer presentations? You bet I do, and they love it. It has really gotten me sales to be able to do my designs, set up a meeting with the husband and the wife, um, move the design around, show them the 3D. I don't totally, you know, but we can make minor changes right there on the spot. What does a glass door look like? Well, you know, what if we take the door off? That is really powerful. Um, I have a subscription to go to meeting so I, I use that and then can record it if I you know want it for some future purpose but there's also I think is I think it's called any meeting uh, that is free uh, or if you Google you can find some free platforms that will allow you to do that so you can do an online meeting and uh, it, and it's it, it makes such a great difference if you are not doing something live right there. Um, somebody says, oh, Lee, interested in Janet's background in interior design. How has that informed her closet work? Were there any particular learnings related to interior design, for example, color theory, that are most helpful to her current profession? Janet, that's for you. Um, more space planning than color theory. Uh, I do um, always look into uh, the new colors for the season interior design wise they always announce them um, that's extremely helpful it doesn't necessarily follow um, the, the offerings that we receive um, from our board manufacturers and our door manufacturers but they are catching on to that faster hence the orange gloss countertop in Carol's closet um, orange was the premier color of that season in the interior design uh, world so I was able to use that, utilize that with her countertops. Um, just a subliminal little uh, message there to the people who are um, seeing the closet. But 
Cool. Uh, yeah, more space planning than than um, interior design planning. But I'm also looking into um, more feng shui. Oh, I, I love, love, yes. And that's, uh, I unfortunately missed a, a, a conference on that due to a, um, another scheduling uh, problem. But yeah, feng shui is an interesting concept in, in designing your closets or your spaces. And totally. more people are being, uh, yeah, if you mention feng shui, they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, so look into that too. That might be interesting. A, yeah. Another way, uh, another handle on how you plan your space based on something. Yeah, excellent. Um, do you anticipate continued growth in the storage and closet industry? That's from Erwin. I do. Um, Erwin, I will tell you that I've had the amazing opportunity to live in a variety of spaces over the last few years. I do a lot of house sitting for people. And where I'm going with that is the amount of stuff that people have. And that stuff can't just sit on the living room floor. So storage is just going to continue to get stronger and stronger. I mean, we are able to move into more elaborate designs. Technology drives our ability to get cool materials and different materials. You know, Janet does an orange glossy top. And the beautiful thing with that is, you know, five years from now, if the client suddenly hates orange, she could go in and change the top. And still, that other structure, which was white and glossy, is still going to be relevant. So. I think that, yes, it will definitely continue to, um, to grow. And here's another com conversion program for Mac users is Parallels, which allows me to use my Mac for designing with KCD. Works well also. So there's a little mm -hmm. insight. for. And how can we get info on using a tablet for everything? Oh, man. What a great way to end, because that looks like the last question, and I don't know how to answer that. Um, using a tablet for everything, Stacy, if you mean like for your whole life, um, I don't know, but maybe you and I should talk and find like the right tech person, because I would love to be able to get a tablet that had that capability so that I'm not, I would have less weight to carry around all over the place. Um, I, I use my iPad. Um, oh, she means for KCD in Excel. Go ahead, exactly. answer that. Say what you were going to say, Janet. Yeah, I mean, I'm already thinking how if if I can, you can use Parallel or Boot Camp on your Mac. Is there a process that they can do on the forthcoming iPads of the future to allow them to 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 block off a portion of it to allow um, Windows-based um, interaction? Because because if I could if I could have KCD on my iPad. I pretty much could do uh, almost everything on a, on a on a iPad, but Got I don't it. have that. So that's a good uh, piece of information, just to, so that they can put that in their hopper and see if that you know in the future might be able to um, work something out. I'm seeing the answer no here from Beth, uh, who does uh, a lot of graphics and a lot of work with KCD. So maybe Beth is saying no in terms of. Um, um, getting it onto an iPad. Yeah, and somebody else is saying, I plan on buying a tablet and just want to get the right uh, key for KCD. So I would say that, you know, the number, their phone number is right there, and they are awesome with answering questions and helping you through the process. So being able to speak to them specifically would, I think, give you the most value because they could steer you in the right direction so that you can accomplish what you're what you're trying to accomplish. And so remember, I, it's it's a business expense. Yes. So if, if I found that logically speaking to go out and to get a tablet uh, that would run KCD that I could just email to myself to get it into the process of onto my computer and to my shop and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it might be something that I would think of in the future. I mean, I love my iPad, but if it's going to make my life easier yeah with a busy day that I ha have every day yeah I might think about that too terrific cool 
So on that note, let's see if there's anything that is exactly what I'm planning on. Yay. Okay. So if anybody, so there's, that is the information, you know, please do, KCD is absolutely the experts on their product and they'd be delighted to answer any questions. So please do that. And Janet, namaste, my greatest gratitude to you for taking the time, for letting us see your projects, for sharing your insights. You're always so helpful, and I love that about you. Like, I, I owe you a cocktail at the next conference. Yeah, I, I will gladly accept that cocktail. Thank you, oh. Denise. It was a lot of fun. Um, thanks, everybody, for uh, coming and, and joining us. Yes, because without an audience, we couldn't do it. So thanks. We hope that was helpful, and we look forward to connecting online all the way around and show us your great stuff, and, you know, let's go forth and make the world a more beautiful place. So thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.